I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to The Bigfoot Project. Hello, my name is Jeff. I wanted to share with you an encounter I had with a Bigfoot several years ago. I live in a town called Bluff City, Tennessee. It was back in January 2008. I was 15 years old at the time. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a cold, crisp night, and there was at least three inches of snow on the ground. Where I grew up was on an old road that ran through the middle of a hauler, and it was rather secluded. We've always had many things there on that road happen, and it was common that none of us would go out after dark. For one, the road only had one street light on it, so besides the light at my parents' house and the single street lamp, it was virtually pitch black on that road. We also had plenty of wildlife back in that hauler. There were coyotes, bobcats, bears, deer, and the occasional mountain lion. So plenty of animals, and all of our neighbors had hunting dogs and cattle and horses. I say all of that for the significance of the story. But going back to the cold, snowy night in January. I stepped outside with my dog so it could go and do its business, and it started there. It was about midnight, and my dog would always go out on its own. Rain, snow, you name it, the dog didn't care at all. But that night, the dog refused to go out. I pushed it out the door for she'd just stand there and whine and scratch at the door. This was highly unusual because the dog had never acted like that before, like it was really scared. So I grabbed the leash and took him out to the front yard. Our yard at the time in front of the house was about a full acre and I'd walk the dog to the far end of the yard. Back behind our house was a 19-acre horse farm that belonged to our neighbors. From where I was, you could see a very good amount of the field. So here I am at midnight in all the snow, and thank God it's a full moon night. Having the full moon and all the snow, it was lit up like daylight outside so you could see everything. I noticed after standing still for about a minute or so, I started to smell a rather odd odor. It was like one I've never smelled before. It was musky and pungent and just completely odd where we were at. I mentioned all the wildlife we had in the hauler because I had been around all of it, hunted all of it too, and none of those animals ever had a smell like this. That's when the neighbor's dog, who had been barking like a mad fool, went suddenly completely quiet, and my dog ran behind me and laid on the ground at my feet, shaking like a leaf. I froze and stood as still as I could, trying to listen, knowing I would hear anything moving with the snow being everywhere. That's when I heard the walking and shuffling. I turned around and faced my parents' house, and it was all black because I was the only one up at the time, always being the night owl that I am. But I faced the house and the 19-acre field behind it and started to look for the source of the sound. Normally, I wouldn't have been so still like I was, but this was an odd shuffle that I heard because I could distinctly tell that whatever it was was walking on two legs. There is a difference, and I always learned to listen for that in the woods at home so I could tell the difference between game and a fellow hunter. We all hunted the same land, so it was common to run across the occasional hunter. But this was a slow, heavy step that I was hearing, or so I thought it was slow. That's when I seen it come from behind a line of trees that was in the middle of the field, and it was walking in a clearing of about a hundred yards or so. It was huge. Even though I knew it was about a hundred to a hundred and twenty yards away, I could tell that this thing was massive. It was the time I was six feet even and weighed around 280 pounds, so I wasn't very little at my age. But seeing this thing made me feel significantly small. I would say it was anywhere around seven feet or taller. Its stride was huge. That's why I said I thought it was a slow, heavy step. Even though it was taking fewer steps, it was making a quick pace across the field with its long gait. It was taking probably a six-foot step every time. I could clearly see that it was extremely hairy. You could see the hair swaying on its arms as it swung back and forth as it walked. And it had a large cone head that was hairy as well. I stood there until it got to the middle of the field, and it registered on my mind what I was truly seeing. It was a Sasquatch. I had always believed and had done plenty of research on it. I knew it would be better if I stayed quiet and just watched it go, but my curiosity got the better of me. So I let out a small, shrill whistle to see what would happen, and the thing stopped in its tracks, turned around, and faced directly toward me. I was terrified, but yet mesmerized at the same time. 
I had always heard that these were intelligent creatures, so I simply raised my hand in the air, almost just as an acknowledgement, and honestly, to try and make myself look bigger. But as I did this, something amazing happened. The Sasquatch raised its hand in a mimicking fashion and stood there as long as I did with its hand up. When I lowered my hand down again, it lowered its hand, and then turned back and headed towards the end of the field. The field was surrounded by a four-foot-tall barbed wire fence, and this creature stepped over it like it was nothing. That's the moment I lost sight of it when I grabbed the dog and ran for the house as fast as I could. I woke everyone up to tell them what happened, and they'd called me crazy ever since. But I know without a shadow of a doubt what I saw that day. Unfortunately for me, it snowed again very hard that night, and when I went out the next morning and into the field to find the tracks, the snow had covered it up except for two wide ruts where its feet drug across the top of the snow, but there were no distinguishable tracks to see. I have cold chills typing this up to send to you, but I know what I saw, and I will never forget what happened. My name is Chris, and I live in a very rural county in Kentucky. One night, after hours of playing poker, I was leaving a friend's home at about 2 or 3 in the a.m. As I stepped off his porch, I heard a noise next to the tree line in front of my jeep. The distance between the porch and the tree line is about 15 yards, and with his driveway the only thing in between. Looking toward the sound, I expected to see a deer or coon or something like that, which is nothing strange in the area. What I saw was something crouched down like a baseball catcher. When my eyes landed on it, it stood. I couldn't see its facial features due to the moon backlighting everything from behind the tree line, but it was around seven feet tall. It had very broad shoulders, a narrower waist, and had arms reaching down to its knees. It felt like it lasted forever, us looking at each other, but probably only lasted seven to ten seconds. Then it huffed at me, then ran into the trees. I think I surprised it by noticing it, and the huff, it was saying, don't follow me. October of 2016, it was mushroom season. Lots of people in Lewis County, Washington, are in the woods just before hunting season gathering mushrooms. This particular day, a friend and I decided to try a new area up the Lincoln Creek Valley, about 30 miles from Centralia. It just so happened that this DNR gate was open, and we drove to the top of one of the foothills and parked the truck on the side of the road. It looked like a good possibility for finding mushrooms. I spotted an opening in the forested area, and that's where we entered. I was immediately taken back by the forest floor. It was spotless. No twigs or limbs like we usually find. Then I noticed two large nest-like structures woven like baskets. I told my friend Tom... Something is living here. We figured that they were at least ten feet across. They were perfectly round, and they accounted for all the sticks and limbs on the forest floor. We had no cameras, only our cell phones, so we took a few snapshots from the phone and then decided there were no mushrooms in sight, so we would go home and come back tomorrow with the camera and take some decent pictures. We returned the next day to find that both nests were gone, and the forest floor was covered in sticks and limbs. That really gave me the creeps. We searched the area in the woods for other signs, and I did find a couple of Bigfoot tracks in the pine needle floor. One side of the forest was logged off, and you could see the sun lighting up the field at that end of the woods, and the back side of the property dropped off rather steeply, and there was a large trail that circled the bottom and came onto the logging road. So it basically looked like a large circle of roads and trails that all connected. I'm a nervous guy, and when I seen something had been there and covered their tracks... Right away, I wanted to leave. My friend just laughed and said it had to be someone screwing with us. No one knew we were there, but the two of us. We left and decided we would come back another time and look for sign or structures. It was two weeks when we packed a lunch, brought the dogs, and I insisted he bring the gun. This time, the gate was locked, so we decided to hike up the hill, which was better than a 45-degree slant straight up the hill. The road had a Y in it. It ran to the left at a 90-degree angle, straight up to where it leveled off. Just before the Y in the road, we passed the opening of the lower part of the hill. It was like a really big game trail. Fresh dirt came out of it and onto the logging road. I noticed several Bigfoot tracks coming out of there and heading up the hill in front of us. They were so fresh, I wanted to head back down to the truck. 
We proceeded up the hill, and one of the dogs stopped at the bend of the road and began to bark uncontrollably. My friend Tom said she barks at a mouse, so don't get all shook up. We got to an area, and we entered the woods. In a different area, we noticed new nests were built. Tom always takes the dogs and goes on his way and leaves me to do the finer investigations, like look for tracks or anything else I may discover. It had been about a half hour or so when I began to hear noises in the woods, like sticks breaking when someone is walking around. I hollered, Is that you, Thomas? And I got no response. Right away I thought, Oh crap, he has the gun. I looked around and I did not see anything, but I was freaking out. All of a sudden, I realized we didn't have a quick getaway. We had to hike about a half mile to get out of there. I heard more sticks and limbs cracking. Some were just off the road from me, which seemed like about 30 feet or so. Facing toward the forest met the logged-off area. One of the dogs came running out and onto the road, right where the edge of the woods were. Greta the dog was running for her life. A Sasquatch was right on her tail. It jumped up onto the road and stopped and looked directly at me. The dog came to me and climbed right up my body and was shaking really bad. I made eye contact with the Sasquatch, and for a moment we stood face to face. Then it jumped off the road and ran across the field like greased lightning. I watched it until it disappeared. By then I was so freaked out I felt like my mind had left my body and I was too terrified to move. It affected all of my senses. I was numb. Then I heard stick snapping, and something was walking inside the woods to my right. Then I realized there was more than one. I walked to where the road took its bend, and stood there waiting for my partner to show. It seemed like eternity, but he eventually came out of the woods down a little further, and was oblivious to anything that had just taken place. I have not been back to this area. My name is Melissa, and in December of 2017, I saw a being from my back porch. I have told no one but my husband, and I only told him because I wanted to protect him, make him aware to be on guard. And then I didn't even tell him exactly what I saw. Just to be careful, because I saw a shadow of a huge animal about 150 feet from our house. My mind was overwhelmed, and for a long time, I called it a shadow. But in reality, it was the creature I was looking at. It doesn't feel right to call it a Sasquatch or Bigfoot. It looked and felt way too ominous just to be an undiscovered hairy hominid. It was early December, possibly late November, around 7.30 p.m., dark outside except for an occasional bright moon. My husband was going somewhere, and I walked out talking to him as he was leaving. I glanced to the right and saw it, and to this day, I have no idea what I was seeing at the time. I stopped talking and just stared. The next thing I remember is looking up at my husband, who was looking down at me like, well, go on, what's the matter with you? We talk about everything, but all I could do was say, be careful, I love you, have a good time. He looked at me funny and said, okay. I watched him get in his truck and leave to make sure he wasn't out there and I couldn't see it anymore, so I went inside and locked the door. I could only see it from the bottom of its bicep, one huge bicep. I kept focusing on that because the moon was shining on the white siding of the building next door. Here's the thing that shuts me up. The siding was only on the second story of that building, above a garage door opening where, now abandoned, big trucks were stored. I'm trembling now. How tall does that make it? The shadow was the darkest black I've ever seen, and the whole silhouette was the same color. The only movement was from side to side, like it was gliding on a skateboard. It had a protruding brow ridge and mouth, and the nose was completely flat in between. It was a side view. Hey, I find it hard and almost impossible to explain to the maybe five people I've ever told the feelings, emotions, and the fear that goes along with an encounter. It's life-changing. For me, not a good one. Most of my encounters were in southwest Alabama at my hunting club, it started in 1998, as far as I can tell looking back and piecing things together. For several years, I would try to rationalize strange things, sounds, strange things with rocks and trees. I had four corn feeders out that I filled every week. During the summer, some weeks, it would jump from 600 pounds to 1,200 pounds. 
The landowners raised hogs and cattle. The guy who had the hogs told me he thinks a bear is opening the 55-gallon drums of feed. He found one of the drums down in the bottom of the ridge near the creek. I looked at the drums. They weren't damaged. Just the rings were taken off. Bears don't do that. And back then, there wasn't any bears in central or most of Alabama. Even now, they are rare. Sometimes calves and hogs came up missing. I think they thought we had something to do with it. There was never any blood, hair, guts, or bones found. I often heard the classic whistles, whoops, the mimicking of owls, coyotes, birds, and on one morning hunt, peacock and kookaburra calls that surrounded me. And I've even had acorns thrown at me. I asked the landowners and guys at the local hardware and feed stores if they knew of anyone who had peacocks or have ever heard any calls. They didn't, and I never heard them again. I've also come across weird things with trees, sticks, and rocks. I've noticed that just before an encounter or when these things are near, the woods would go silent. Daytime, the birds go silent, and during the night, the frogs and crickets go silent. When the woods go silent or the hair on the back of your neck stands up, be on high alert. At night, I had tapping on the bedroom windows of my camper. I thought it was the wind blowing vines against the windows, so I cut the vines down. The tapping happened again, so I trimmed the limbs of the tree. The tapping happened again, so I cut down the only shade tree I had. The next time the tapping started, I looked out the window, and this time there was nothing hindering the backlit night sky. What I saw was a big silhouette of a dome-shaped head and shoulders. The front section where the coupler was of the fifth-wheel camper is where the beds were. The bottom of the floor area was about four to five feet from the ground. That put the bottom of the two-by-four-foot window about seven feet. The curve of its shoulders were just inside the bottom edge of the window, its head just over the top. I froze in fear. I grabbed my three fifty seven mag, then rolled over and prayed for daylight. I ended up taping some heavy-duty black lawn trash bags over the windows. In the same 2008 season, I arrived at the hunting club at about 9 p.m. Friday night and loaded the truck, lay out my gear for the morning hunt, and jump in bed. About 1 a.m., I awoke to coyotes yapping and howling. They sounded like they were fighting each other in three different spots around my camper. Some fighting behind the camper, some in front by the dirt road. What really freaked me out was the one on the porch side outside the door. I grabbed my 357 mag, flipped on the porch light, and jumped out the door. Crap was crashing through the brush in three different directions. The floodlight came on in the front of the clubhouse, and after the morning hunt, I walked around looking for tracks. Didn't even see one track. Saturday night, after the evening hunt, I cooked my dinner and then went to bed. Again, around 1 a.m., the same crap. This time, I grabbed my 357 mag, but didn't turn on the porch light. So I jumped out of the door this time. I hear a loud, what I would describe as growl and a huff at the same time. I see one huge black blob go around towards the front of the clubhouse, and the other black blob went across the dirt road, crashing towards the woods, at which time I fired at it. I didn't see anything after that except the image of the flames that came out of the gun that was burnt into my eyeballs. After the Sunday morning hunt, I looked for tracks or blood. Didn't see anything. The only thing I saw was where something big went through the brush. I packed up and went home. I didn't hunt that evening. The next week, Friday night, I get to the hunting club, park my truck, go into the camper and turn on the lights. There's a tree limb stuck straight up and down through the roof dead center between the beds. It took out the light fixture. It was about eight feet long and six to eight inches in diameter. I went outside with a handheld flashlight, and about three feet of it was sticking out of the roof. They sent me a message, and they made their point. I always wondered if they thought I was in bed that Sunday night. So many things happened on that property. I quit hunting there. Thanks for joining me on the Bigfoot Project. If you enjoyed today's video, here's one you don't want to miss. Also, if you have a story you'd like to share on this channel, email me, Lynn Smith, at thebigfootproject at mail.com. I hope to hear from you soon.